الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد we should seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of our affairs the believers should rely on their lord depend upon their lord supplicate to their lord ask his favor his blessings his guidance as we do throughout our daily prayers and all throughout the days of our life this is what is uh, an obligation upon us and it is also something recommended for us meaning to be always striving to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to try to be in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of your affairs and rely upon him because the person who takes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as their protector their soul protector that relies upon their lord in totality is a person who will never be in a loss as human beings we fail one another we can depend we can protect we can support and help and assist one another but there's no comparison with the help and the support of the creator and so relying on your lord subhanahu wa ta'ala who you've never seen who you worship during the day and the evening is seeking the ultimate protection and this is a part of iman as a, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in the hadith of jibril alayhi salatu wasalam when he was asked about faith he was asked about iman from jibril alayhi salatu wasalam who said akhbirni an al-iman jibril said this jibril said tell me about iman the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded by saying and took minu and took min billahi وملائكته وكتبه ورسوله ويوم الآخر تؤمن بقدر خيره وشر. The Prophet ﷺ responded by giving us what we refer to as the arkan of iman, the pillars of iman. So the Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, "It is to believe in Allah. It is to believe in His angels, and to believe in His messengers, and believe in His books, and believe in the." day of judgment and to believe in divine destiny the good in it and the evil of it so this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded by and this is an affirmation that the first pillar of iman is believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believing in his uh his oneness in his lordship believing in his divine names and attributes as he has described himself in the Quran and in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has described Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is how we understand who Allah is and this is a part of his oneness and we believe in directing all worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and that means the worship that is open and the worship that is concealed within the heart from those acts of worship that are open we have things such as praying and supplicating and making the pilgrimage and doing good deeds in charity from the deeds that are within our hearts that no one can see some of the scholars they refer to fasting in this in this way because no one knows uh they can see that maybe they haven't seen you taking food but you could go in the restaurant you could go some place and take food so some scholars refer to that as some of the ibadah batania you know some of that internal worship or hidden worship and so things like relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making tawakkul and istiana you know asking and seeking his support and aid relying solely upon him and trusting in him these are inward acts of worship and so it's imperative for the believer to always worship Allah subhanahu 
wa ta'ala and have faith in him and trust in him and to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a part of worship al isti'adha to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's many ahadith even when we read the Quran we say a'udhu billah min shaitan rajim we seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan so in one's I want to mention a supplication to help us with our iman. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned this is in, came from the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Prophet ﷺ said this supplication. He said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazli wa'adzi wa-kasli wa-bukhli wa-jubni wa-dala'adin wa-ghalabati al-rijal. And this is related in Bukhari. In this beautiful supplication, the Prophet ﷺ, and it's something we should strive to, to memorize, he, he began by saying, O oh Allah, by supplicating, O oh Allah, humbling himself before his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking, this is the, the way in which we ask Allah, O oh Allah, verily, I seek refuge in you, from depression and sadness and from inability and laziness and from miserliness and cowardice and, and cowardice and from difficulty with regards to my religion and the oppression of men a beautiful beautiful supplication this is because we all of these things relate to the various aspects of our life and it's contained in a simple supplication to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah I seek refuge in you this is ibadah you're imploring your Lord to seek refuge seeking his help and his assistance and you're, uh, to leave your affairs with and entrust your affairs with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala you're seeking his refuge his protection from from sadness and depression and all of us at one time or another experience sadness and depression in our lives but when you turn to your Lord and you leave that or you put your trust in Him and ask for His protection seeking refuge in Him to support you and help you to overcome oppression then this is a great act of worship and this and he is the best of those who could support you and seeking refuge in Allah we all experience weakness and we experience the inability to do many things because we're imperfect beings and there's many things we don't have the ability to do or ability to withstand so that inability to do things, you're seeking refuge in your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you, to be able to, to make you able to fulfill your duties and to keep you uh, full of energy and life to be able to remove yourself from laziness, especially with regards to worship. But in fact, in all affairs, in laziness in regards to your work, in laziness in, in regards to serving your parents, in, re- in laziness in regards to sharing with others, with other human beings, with laziness, and even doing good acts. Sometimes we're too lazy we, because of our own problems and our, 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 our laziness. We may not even give someone the greetings. Or we may, uh, when we know we could have made just a little effort to smile, to brighten up someone else's day, but we were lazy and we let our own issues distract us from that. So seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from those characteristics is a part of this supplication and is a part of the characteristics of the believer. And seeking refuge in miserliness and cowardice, because we all, from one time or another, and some of us more than others, may have be afflicted with miserliness, being stingy, being afraid to spend, Afraid to share things. May Allah protect us from that. And we all 
from time to time might experience cowardice, cower, be fearful of someone or something which is not worthy of being fearful of. That in fact we should have a type of bravery and able to face whatever we need to face knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching all of our affairs. He sees all of our affairs. He hears all of our affairs. And His knowledge is all-encompassing. So, to know that we can have the assistance and support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we seek refuge in Him from also cowardice and from miseriness. And the last thing is the difficulty with regards to our religion being trial, uh, being tested excessively. We seek refuge in Allah from that. Being tested with our family, being tested with our wealth, being tested with our property, being tested with our friends, being tested with our, our provisions. We seek refuge in Allah from those things. And being tested more, most importantly, as is mentioned in the supplication, being tested with regards to your faith. Having doubtful things come to you. Doubtful issues. People of doubt. People who want to put doubt in your heart. People who want to distract you from the truth. People who want to distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek refuge in Allah from that. وَعَيَادَ اللَّهِ مِنْهُمْ We seek a refuge in Allah from them. From the devils. And those people who want to deceive and distort the religion of Islam. So we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from trials in the religion. Also, we seek refuge as the final uh, part of the dua, of the supplication. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَغَلَبَتِ rijal." He said, and being overcome or oppressed by men. We seek refuge in that as we see in many places in the world. You won't find a place on the earth where people do not experience oppression in one form or another. It may be the oppression in racism. They may have a society which oppresses them because they're a minority people. They may have a society that oppresses them because of their faith. You may have a society that oppresses them because they are uh, the different tribe or their social class or their, their status. All of these are various forms of oppression. And we see throughout the earth that many people are experiencing the difficulties and being oppressed. So we seek refuge in Allah against oppression and against oppressors. May Allah protect us from the harms of those people who oppress. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide those people who oppress. Guide them to the Sirat al mustaqim and, and, and bless them to be of those people who are guided and stop oppression and make repentance. This is a beautiful thing to supplicate. As the Salaf al the righteous predecessors, the, the early classical scholars in Islam, they used to supplicate for the Muslim leader that was, had become a tyrant. So even, it is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, to supplicate for the oppressive leader. And may Allah guide all the oppressive leaders to come back to the correct path and to be gentle and kind and merciful to their subjects and to assist their subjects with all of their needs that they need and especially with regards to their livelihood and their, their religion. And may Allah safeguard, safeguard us in our religion and protect us from Kulishar. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.